Module 4, Lesson 14, Writing Division Expressions. So this is day two of working with division. All right, learning targets. Show and explain the relationship between the operations for specific and general situations. We're going to look a little bit at specific and general. Represent real life situations using mathematical expressions, not looking so much at that in this lesson. Compare expressions. So once again, we are looking at equivalent ways of expressing division. Experiment using expressions in comparison to mathematically predict values dependent on other values. Not looking at as much at that in this lesson. All right, I can statements. I can write numerical expression. Still have to fix that. I can write a numerical expression to represent division using two forms. We are continuing to build the relationship between this more standard form that you may have been exposed to more often and the fraction forms we're also going to be mixing in the good old division box and then explain the relationship between the forms of division so an example to look at here uh, we have a graphic organizer and we can see that we have an expression here 15 divided by 3 and we are looking at equivalent ways to write this expression. And we're organizing it graphically, so we need something in the box here, something in the box here, and something in the box here. These first boxes on the right hand side probably look pretty familiar to you. So we have 15 divided by 3. If there is any mistake that students commonly make, it is 3, sorry, it is reading it left to right and saying 15 divided by 3. This would be a no-no. We read it from the inside out, 15 divided by 3. Yesterday we looked at the fraction bar, last lesson, 15 divided by 3 with the dividend as the numerator and the divisor as the denominator. This last box is where we write the expression in words. So the quotient of 15 and 3. And of course, I've got some typed up versions to appear here. The quotient of 15 and 3, so we're expressing it using words. The dividend is inside the division symbol. The divisor is on the outside. Dividend is the numerator. Divisor is the denominator. So this is completing this chart in a specific situation. We are given a specific expression to work with. In this next example, we are filling in the four boxes and we're using the words dividend and divisor. And this is set up for any example. So we are now looking at a general example. Uh, we could even play with variables if we wanted to. We could say that A is the dividend and B is the divisor. So for A is the dividend and for B is the divisor. But for now we can just focus on the words. So think about how you would write a phrase using the words dividend and divisor. Hopefully your brain says, hey, it's the quotient of the dividend and the divisor. And then think about how you would put the words dividend and divisor into the regular division symbol there. And then how would we write it with the regular form here? Dividend divided by the divisor. And then we have it in the fraction form. The dividend divided by the divisor. So once again, we are working a lot in this lesson on just establishing the relationship between these four ways of showing division. We really want to have solid in our head this relationship. All right, there are a variety of exercises that go with this lesson. Um, we have set A, set B, and set C, depending on who your teacher is. They may have a different set for you. I'm just going to do a couple of problems from each of the sets real fast so that you have something to look at. Um, I will add a link. I haven't put this up yet, but I will add a link 
to where the sets are so that you can find the other sets and look at them. So looking at this first exercise in set A, we have 5 divided by P, so the quotient of 5 and P. And we've got 5 divided by P, and 5 divided by P, and 5 divided by P. So it's not, right now we're not doing any computation or anything. We're simply reading these expressions and putting them into these different forms. So uh, another good one to look at. Um, Number four might be a good one to look at. Take a look at that and think about how you are going to make that look in all of these different forms. Got to pull out my papers here. The print is a little small on my screen. All right, so number four here. We have y over x plus 8. And of course, they gave it to us in the fraction form, so we have to ask ourselves, how is this going to look in each of these different forms here? Well, y is the dividend, and x plus 8 is the divisor. And y is the dividend, and x plus 8 is the divisor. Now, I've tried to emphasize the last lesson. We need to ask ourselves, when do we need the parentheses? This left to right form here, when we start writing things that way, we need to pay very close attention to parentheses. If I follow the order of operations, I would do the y divided by x, and then I would add 8. However, the expression shows that we are supposed to have x plus 8, and then complete the division. So I need to make sure I keep those parentheses in there. All right, the last one, and these are probably the hardest ones when we write them in words. So I have the quotient of y and the quantity of x and 8. Now I could also express this as, using some different words here, so the quotient of y and the sum of x and 8. And I kind of like using you know some of that math vocabulary, the word sum is a nice one. So that's a couple of examples from set A. Take a look here at set B. Uh, number 7 is a nice one here. We've got y minus 3 divided by x. Now, of course, in this horizontal form, I've got to go back and say, what about order of operations? Um, I don't want to do the 3 divided by x first. I want to do the y minus 3 and then divide by x. And, of course, I've got y minus 3 divided by x. And now I have to think about, all right, how am I going to express this in words? So I've got the quotient. of y minus 3. Well, you know what? I'm even going to get a little tricky here. I'm going to do 3 less than y and x. So the and being our division operator here, and I've got 3 less than y as a dividend and x as a divisor. And let's take a look at number 8 here. 
and I know it's kind of small, g plus 5 over h minus 11. g plus 5 over h minus 11. I'm going to have to do some thinking about this one. Um, so I'm going to have g plus 5, and that's going to be divided by h minus 11. And I need to show that the addition and subtraction happened before the division, so I need to make sure I include the parentheses to perform those operations first. All right, now the words. The words are kind of fun here. Got to think about this. So I've got the sum of g plus 5. We'll see, I'm going to do um, the dividend. g plus 5 divided by h minus 11. So I have got very specific here and said, what is the dividend? And I want to divide by h minus 11. The quotient of the sum of g and 5 and the difference of h and 11. And of course, that one has a lot of ands, so you would have to think about it pretty carefully. Um, let's see. The quotient of g plus 5 and h minus 11. Nice and simple there. All right, let's take a look at some from set C. How about number 4? 15 over f minus 2. So I've got 15 divided by f minus 2. And once again, got to ask about order of operations. If there's any great takeaway from this lesson, it is when you write division horizontally, you really have to think about when do you need to put parentheses in. So I've got the f minus 2 first, and 15 is divided by that. 15 divided by f minus 2, and then thinking about how I'm going to write this in words. Um, 15 divided by 2 less than f. All right, and then how about looking at number seven here, h minus two divided by m is what they give us. So I have a dividend of h minus two. I have a divisor of m. And now I need to think about how to put this in words. The quotient of h reduced by 2 and m. Notice I'm trying to think of different ways to express the subtraction. We really need to be flexible in our thinking. Don't want to get locked into just one way of thinking of division or subtraction, or addition, or multiplication. There are so many ways to express them. All right, so your closing activity, if you were in class, is that you would trade pages with another pair of students, and you would look over their work. And if all their boxes are correct, you would write a sentence and summarize why the expressions that they have written are equivalent. If you look at some of their expressions and you notice that there are errors, if there are mistakes, then you would need to write a sentence explaining what would be necessary to correct the mistakes. 
If I had to make any guess, one of the big missing things is going to be parentheses in the horizontal forms. Another closing activity takes this a step further, actually doing a little bit of substitution. And they give you some values here. And so you would pick an expression from set A, and you would actually do some evaluation. It's important to recognize that some of your simplified expressions are going to need to be written as fractions or decimals. So in set A, we could do, uh, let's see, number 5 would be 7 divided by the quantity A minus 6. 7 divided by the quantity A, which is 10, minus 6. And so I have substituted in the 10 for the A, and now I would follow the order of operations. 10 divided by 6 would be 4, so I have 7 divided by 4, and I would get 7 fourths, which would be 1 and 3 fourths. So actually doing some substitution and simplifying the expressions using order of operations. Of course, this means that you have to stop and think about order of operations, which can be kind of useful. So go ahead and play with those if you would like to. Great opportunity to do some substitution and practice your order of operations. All right, taking a look at the ICANN statements here. Write a numerical expression to represent division using two forms. Um, we were actually working on four forms today. Um, but really trying to establish the relationship between this and this, the traditional method and the fraction form. But we did also work on this form of division, and we did work on using words. And hopefully we can see the relationship between the forms of division where the dividend and divisor fit in each of the problems. All right, looking at the learning target here, comparing expressions, we really looked at equivalent forms of expressions when they match up. And then if you did the closing activity, working with the variables and the assigned values, um, certainly doing some substitution there and seeing that expressions are equivalent. All right, so that concludes Module 4, Lesson 14. If you have any questions, make sure you get with your teacher and work your way through your problem set.